Hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Yes, another second channel video. So what you see here on the bench is a leading edge Model D. Now I've already covered one of these on the channel, on main channel, so I'm not really going to cover this one. I did have uh, something I maybe wanted to show. This might turn into a video or it might not depending on the outcome. This here is the hard drive that was inside this machine. Don't really know the specs on it. It looks like it's by a company called Fuji Electric. I don't know, three and a half inch hard drive doesn't really have much branding on it. Back in the eighties, there were a lot of hard drive companies, a lot. Ones you've never heard of. A lot of those companies just got bought up by the big players we have today. Western Digital, Seagate. I think that's all we have left these days, right? Of the ones you've, for the consumer market. But there was a bunch of others that you just have never heard of because they were they came into existence for a handful of years and then they were gone. So it's quite possible that this is one of them. I'll unplug the power cable here. Let's take a look. Oh wait, here's some branding or something. It is the FK309 Fuji Electric Company, made in Japan. So Fuji, like Fuji Film. Is this a a division of that company maybe. Anyhow, uh, this drive has a problem, uh, which is totally understandable considering the age of the machine. I'll plug the power back in. When I power this thing on, first it wasn't spinning at all, but let's turn on the computer and see what happens here. Okay, it spun up and it tries to move the head stepper assembly here and then it just shuts off. Let me zoom in on that. See this wheel right here? This is the, I guess that's the stepper motor behind here. And this wheel would turn as the head moves back and forth. If I turn the power off and turn it back on, now it's gonna be hard to hear because the power supply fan in this thing is so loud. So it kind of drowns out the sound of this disc, but it does spin up. It tries to move this. It moves a little bit and then it just spins down. So I think it's, this is stuck. Here we go. There it is, it just tried to move and then kind of gave up. Now, there is a little parking brake metal thing down there. Let's see if you can see it when I turn the power off. It's just right down there and it clicks into place, which kind of locks this to keep it from moving. When I turn it back on, it does move that way. Yeah, okay, anyway, so that's not moving properly. The drive is not happy. I'm gonna try my trick where I put some bearing oil into this thing, hopefully get this working. I've d had this happen before where I've got drives working. It's not super reliable in the long term, but it has worked. I did have a main channel video about it a while back, but that hard drive that what I showed on that sh video was already fixed by the time I made the video. I made the video after the fact, I just sort of talked about it. This drive obviously is malfunctioning. So I thought it might be fun to actually do the oil trick and see if that revives this drive. First step is going to be trying to get this drive out of this carrier thing here. All right, and here is this stepper motor gear thingy, thingy, thingy. It is hard to see, but that little metal tong moving back and forth there, that's the parking brake, so to speak keeps this from moving when the power is not applied. Now I think I'm gonna have to, hmm, how do I get to this? I need to, I need to get this plastic wheel off so I can put a little oil down into the bearing. But unfortunately this metal chassis thing is kind of in the way. And wow, that's really hard. So this is a rubber bushing here, kind of like a, suspension, so to speak, and that is hard as a rock. Don't think that's causing the drive not to work, of course, but... Hmm, hmm. I think I'm just gonna move the computer off the desk and take all the screws out to try to get that thing off. All right, I got this wheel off. Now I did index it with a marker to kind of know which way that goes on. I don't think it matters necessarily. This thing here, that's the motor shaft in the center. And this, this thing, 
which I should mark with the marker just so I know exactly where it goes on like there. I assume it's pushed on there or pressed on there. I'm going to try to lift it off with some screwdrivers. No, nope. no, nope. that is not coming off. I assume it's pressed on at the factory. Maybe there's a hydraulic press that pushes it down. Not sure. So I have my little assortment of things. Let's see here. This one here is bearing oil. That's what I'm going to drip into there. I'm going to, I guess I'm just going to try to get it underneath and turn this on its side and try to get this to go down under this thingy, whatever this is, assembly here. And maybe then it'll make its way down onto the, down into the bearing. What I'm going to try to do is spin this up while this is sort of disassembled so I can exercise that thing. I have my bench power supply thing I use for testing drives here, connected to power. Let's make sure it's off first before I try to turn this on. Boy, this thing's falling apart. It is off, okay. All right, well, it did move the little stepper. Oh, it's definitely getting stuck. Definitely getting stuck. I think it's not a good idea to turn this while the disc is not spinning. There we go. Yeah, it's um, there's a few positions where the bearing is not that smooth anymore. And that's one of them right there. I can feel it when I spin the drive. Right there. There's a probably another one right there too. Yep. Well, the, draw, the drive has stayed spinning here, but I'm, it's not going to be reliable. I really need to get this oil down and into the drive. Let's see here. Maybe just moving it back and forth is doing the trick though. Well, that's a lot better, isn't it? When I power cycle it again, I zoomed in a little bit. Check out what this thing does now. So I don't think that's quite working correctly right now, but it's working a lot better. This is obviously the, the home position right there. Let's turn it back on like this. Hey, it's definitely getting better. I'm gonna drop a couple drops of this oil in there. I mean, I really don't think it's getting down in there, but maybe it, the fact that it's running or it's being a lot smoother. I mean, that could be the normal initialization process right there. Let's try one more time. I'm just gonna keep doing this. Well, that time it kind of clunked into the stop. Not a good sign. Okay, here we go. Hmm. I think now it's actually working properly. It did sort of banging into the stop there, but maybe that's not a problem. But where it's resting right now, there's actually this little metal thing. It's actually up against that stop. So that's obviously home position. While it's energized, I can't freely move this because the stepper motor is actually locked in position by the um, electrical fields on here. But as soon as I turn the power off, while the drive is still spinning, I can freely move this all the way around. So I'm gonna move it to the extreme there and let's see if it smoothly goes back to its home position.
That looks pretty good. It's moving very smoothly. I'm just gonna power cycle this a few times and then I'm gonna clean off this excess oil that's on here and then we'll give it a test. Oh, that time it didn't even bang into the stop over here. So maybe now it's actually working. I don't know. Hmm. That seems like a perfect power on process right there. No banging, smooth operation. Turn this all the way here. Let's try again. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm calling it. I'm gonna clean up the soil now and we'll put this back together. All right, before I actually completely put it back together, the wheel's back on. Let's just see if it works. The parking brake's engaged right now, so this can't turn. Here we go. Yep. Hmm, it kind of got bound up there a little bit. Let's try that again. Okay, it's working. I think it's good enough. I can get this working on the computer detected. Then I can use a program like Check It to just do random seek tests, which will completely exercise this assembly. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I forgot as soon as I turn on the power, the parking brake, so to speak, <laughs> comes off. There we go. There we go, turned it all the way. Nice, okay, let me put the rest of the screws in. All right, the leading edge, it's ready for testing. This is the matching amber monitor. I didn't have this on the last computer. This is actually a slightly different model. It's still a leading edge model D, but this is a little bit different than my last one because this one actually has turbo. So besides the 4.77 megahertz, also got like a 7.14 megahertz or something thereabouts. So it's, that's a little different. But otherwise, I think it's essentially identical. The other one had two internal floppies and a hard drive on a hard card. This has this five and a quarter inch 360K along with um, the hard drive that was mounted in a drive bay and it had a Microsoft import. So there's a bus mouse card in there. That's it, didn't really have anything else in there. It's just an 8088, 640K RAM, monochrome screen, and it's got some rust and stuff on here. I didn't get the keyboard either, but I have this XT keyboard here. So let's try see if this works. So hard drive spun up. There we go, it did this little access-y thing. So that's good. And we should get the picture here. There it is, appearing on the screen. It's counting the RAM at the moment. Unfortunately, this monitor is a little bit dim. Controls are all the way up and yet it's still not super bright. Uh, I think I can push space bar. Okay, the floppy drive makes weird noises. I think it's not necessarily working. Is the computer gonna boot? Has an MFM controller in here. It's just off to the side here. Hmm. Oh, wait, maybe? Huh. I oh. Oh, it's working! It's loading, it's booting! Look at that! Look at that! Word perfect. Lotus123. Microsoft Project? I didn't know Project had an XT version. Microsoft Chart, DBase3, PC Tools, and good old DOS. Oh, there's three pages too. Let's see if I can get to the next page. Oh, games, Chuck Yeager Flight Simulator. Larry and the, oh, it's saw Leisure Suit Larry and the Land of the Lounge Lizards, a uh, special hangman game, more totally awesome games to numb thyself. So I'm gonna end this video here. The trick is, if you have a drive where it doesn't seem to be sinking like this one, use some bearing oil and try to get it down into the stepper motor. And then once you do, and it kind of starts to work like this, run some software that's gonna put the drive through its paces, something even like 
check disc will do that. But of course there is Spinrite, which was a common tool a lot of people used on MFM drives, which has got to be what this is. And that will kind of re-low level the drive without affecting what's on it. And it really exercises the head and everything in the process. So that kind of oil should get worked into the bearings. But that's my top tip for getting these drives working again. This has worked for me on numerous of these drives. So yeah, keep it in mind. If you have an old drive and you wanna get it working, at least just to see what's on it. Don't trust it though. I recommend you put something like a XT IDE in here or the compact flash card and copy off anything off the drive that you want because there's a good chance this drive won't be long for this world. To really fix this, you have to replace the stepper motor or the bearings that are on the shaft. There's no way that a little bit of oil will be a permanent fix. So just keep that in mind as well. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Since this is my second channel, I'm just getting started. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Um, you can check out my main channel, of course. I'll put a link in the description of that. Support me on Patreon if you so desire. Comments in the comment section below. And that is gonna be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.